Welcome to Let's Be Real 100%, where we are 100% real about life. We know that life happens and we are here to talk about it. And when I say we, I'm talking about it's all God and little old me. Join us as we jump into our topic today. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome back to another episode of Let's Be Real. This journey that we have been on has been absolutely amazing. Let's continue our journey with Miss Zeen Asser. Let's walk with her through her journey. And we will come back and talk to you soon. Good afternoon. Hi, can you hear me? I can. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Right. Awesome, awesome. Welcome to an episode with me. Uh, I, okay, hold on. I'm sorry. I had to turn off this thing here. How's your day going so far? It's going well. I just got up. I was vending uh, yesterday, so I was actually super tired, so I didn't wake up till like noon. Listen, so I was vending I wish. <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> I wish, I wish, I wish. I'm glad you was able to get you some rest today, though, because it's definitely needed, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, it definitely is. Um, so I would like to start off um, with the icebreaker, where I usually start off with. Uh, let's see. Okay. I usually be more organized. I'm sorry. I'm just really making it home from service. <laughs> so uh, let's see. Oh, no. That's not what I want to do. I'm trying to do something different other than what I've been doing. Um, what would a perfect day look like for you? Well, a perfect day for me is just really being in the moment. I try to be in the moment as much as possible. So I try to enjoy whatever weather it is, you know, do some self-care every day Mm -hmm. and just live in my purpose. So I try to make uh, every day as perfect as I can. So I I don't actually have like a a answer for that because that's like my goal every day. (laughs) Oh, yeah, that's that's so true because you want your day to be as good as it can get every day, every day. Yes. Every day. Okay, well, yeah. I mean, I could, we can, I'm sure, I, I can definitely relate to that. Uh, I was looking at your, uh, your website. You have a lot going on um, as far as uh, what the way your uh, website is built up from your podcast to uh, Zenergy, writing books. Um, can you tell me uh, more, a little bit more about yourself? Well, um, I was a high school teacher for 30 years, and then I decided that I was not going to make it to 65 as a high school teacher. So in 2018, I decided I was going to start working on my exit plan mm-hmm. and also working on my stress level. And so it kind of started out with me just doing a lot of writing and performing. And then that Mm. turned into a door opening for me to do shows. And then then I got a a DBA doing business as to put on events. Mm -hmm. And then during our quarantine, when everybody was stuck in their house, I didn't want to lose my audience. So people had said, hey, you have a great voice. You should do a podcast. I didn't know anything about podcasts. I'd never listened to one. Right. The podcasting class and I started my podcast Zenergy and I put some merch that I had been creating, which was only really t-shirts at that time mm-hmm. online. And I started to sell um, through a, a Teespring website and I started the, the podcast Zenergy based off of my journaling because I, I had been journaling since I was a kid mm-hmm. and I started to focus on how I could develop myself while we were all stuck in our house. Right, And so I was going A to Z journaling about self-development topics. And I was like, well, this would be an interesting conversation if I brought people on and they talked about how this topic is important to them and how it's helped them to deal with quarantine and also to develop their inner skills, abilities, talents. And so that, that led to people asking me how to teach them how to journal. 
because mm-hmm. they had never journaled before. So I started doing workshops and I released my first book, which was a guided journal. Okay. So everything kind of piggybacked on everything else. And then um, fast forward to now, I retired six months ago from teaching okay. because I was ready. I was ready to go. And also I felt like I had enough to supplement my income to where I could make it on my pension from teaching okay. as well as my other things that I'm doing. Yeah, okay. Well, that definitely sounds like a goal that we are trying to reach to that uh that entrepreneurship where we don't have to, you know, focus on a nine to five. We can do something that we actually love to do. So uh, that's what we're definitely working on, working toward. So into that journey, how did you get into the journey of, you know, um, I guess your the path you took. I guess from you, you say you used to journalize when you were younger. Um, like what made you desire to continue, like in your poetry, how did you, uh, in, into, enter into poetry and all of that? I would say poetry found me. I don't remember when I wrote my first poem. I just, I, I, I started to journal and the journaling turned into poetry. It turned into you know, a lot of images and rhymes and, and metaphors and similes. And so it just kind of went that way. So I don't, I don't remember the first poem, but once I started doing it, I just kept doing it. But I will say for me, um, I can only write when I'm in a safe space. I was married Mm -hmm. twice. And during those two marriages, they were both abusive in some way. I actually didn't write at all. Mm-hmm. Um, and so once I got divorced, I, I think I had a lot of repressed stuff that needed to come out. And so yes. I've done a tremendous amount of writing in the nine years since I've been divorced. Wow. Yeah. That's, um, that's usually how it, um, happens. Cause I, like you, like you, I, I started journalizing as a young girl and, um, my journaling turned into music. I don't know about poetry. I mean, I guess it could be one, um, of the same, I guess, but um, I used I used the things that I was going through or the things that I was thinking, you know, and turned it into music. So it was like a, I want to say, oh, well, I guess a little girl. It's like a a way to express yourself um, when you're going through those things. And you're right, you have to be in a safe space um, in order to write um, to write something because if your mind is all over the place or you're focused on, you know, a whole lot of things. You won't be able to. Um, you won't be able to, you know, flow like you would like to. Uh, so into those. Um, so if somebody wanted to, what kind of advice would you give someone who um, has that same kind of goal but don't know how to get there? Like, what would you tell them? Well, I would say start where you are you know, depending on what your goal is, start where you are. If you, if you want to be a writer, you have to write mm-hmm. and you have to develop your skills. If you want to be an entrepreneur, I would say, you know, start deciding what, 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 what kind of entrepreneur you might want to be. Are you going to do a side hustle? Are you going to do it full time, part time? You know, are you going to be, you know, what's your niche? So I would just, I, I would say, start with daydreaming, thinking about it writing down some of your visions and goals, and then just start wherever you are. Um, nobody has to launch a, a, a massive company overnight. You know, we can all right. start small. And for me, everything that I've done has started small and it's just led to something bigger. Right. And I would also say step through whatever doors come your way, because, you know, like in my case, I was at an open mic and a, a manager came up and said, Hey, I love your poetry. Could you create a show for me? I had never created a show. I didn't know anything about creating a show, but I didn't say mm-hmm. no. I said, right. hey, give right. me a month. Right. <laughs> so I spent that month contacting everybody I knew, DJs, flyer makers, you know, poets that I had run across and getting advice. And then, you know, a month later, we had the first show. So you know, give yourself a timeline, but walk yes. through the door. Right. Because had I not walked through that first door, I would not be sitting here talking to you on this podcast. 
and I didn't know anything about creating a show, but I'm like, you know right. what I can find out. And, I, know and I was willing to, you have to be able to, in a sense, crawl before you walk. So yeah. I was willing to make mistakes along the way. I mean, our mm -hmm. first show was, was a smash. It was great. And, and we've had, you know, great shows ever since I, it's my five year anniversary coming up in four days. Mm -hmm. you know, of the show, lyrics, but that that would be my advice <laughs> okay yeah i was listening to um one of the videos um and you were talking about how you all these things you had you know some anniversaries coming up and i was like okay you know congratulations on that um on your anniversaries and again uh, i'm glad that you were able to keep uh to keep pushing you know um giving your son giving yourself a time frame to do it um because a lot of people don't like for me i i didn't back then i didn't do that i if i couldn't do it right then and there then i gave up like i was like you know what i'm not gonna be able to do it don't even worry about it you know but now it's like like you said you know it's okay to give yourself time to do your research and you know get your connections you know get your plugs or whatever you want to call it um so that what your desires and your dreams are, you know, because we're, um, I know my, my leader used to teach us, he teaches us that no man is an island. You know, you can't do everything by yourself, you know, because if you did, you'll wear yourself out, you know, because we don't have all the resources. So it's definitely good that you said that by giving yourself time, giving yourself a deadline and being patient with yourself um, as you go through those journeys. So how did you come up with the name Zenergy? I actually like that name. I know it's your name and then, you know, energy, but like, how did you, you know? Right. Um, well, I wanted to thank you for, for congratulating me on the anniversaries, but Zenergy, oh, okay. <clears throat> excuse me. I was talking so much yesterday. I got a, like a little bit of horses <laughs> as I was busy <laughs> yesterday. Zenergy is a word that I made up. Um, mm -hmm. I looked up the names of different podcasts that were out there. Mm -hmm. and there was one called Zen Energy. And mm. um, I liked, you know, energy as a performer is really powerful. Yes. But I wanted to uh, do something different in a sense. I wanted to make people think of energy. Mm. But I really felt like what pushed me to do everything I did was like this urge inside of me. And I felt it was like an urge for peace and an urge for fulfillment, for like self-actualization. So I felt that everybody kind of had that urge. It's what makes you get up in the morning. It's what makes right. you go to bed. It's what makes you try new things. So I felt like we all had this urge inside of us that was pushing us or motivating us. But I also didn't want to be the kind of person that, like you said, was burning myself out. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to follow that urge, but keep a sense of peace and calm about myself. So I was always looking for that balance. And so that's where I came up with the word Zenergy, Z-E-N-N-U-R-G-Y. It's like the urge for yes. fulfillment, but I want to mm -hmm. keep that peace while I'm looking for this fulfillment. I don't want to be the hamster on the wheel. I don't yes. want to be a rat in a rat race. I want yeah. to keep my peace while I'm fulfilling my goals. Right. You want to be able to enjoy it. Right. The, enjoy yeah. the journey. So that's really what the podcast, the podcast had three, basically three focal points, self-care, mm -hmm. self-empowerment and self-actualization. And so, mm -hmm. you know, to me, the self-actualization is that push for fulfillment, but the self-care is like, keep your peace. <laughs> right. You know, take <laughs> care of yourself. Don't burn yourself out. Right. You know, yeah, but once that piece is gone, along it's gone. the way also, you might need to set some boundaries. You might need to find yes. your voice, you know? So it, it kind of was like, I felt like you had to kind of have all three to mm -hmm. have a healthy journey. Yes. You do have to have all definitely. Cause if you don't <laughs> like, this, like I, I know a lot of people say, if you don't take care of yourself, you know, then nobody will nobody can take care of you better than you and i believe that um if you, like you said self-care goes a long way whether it's just um sitting back in a quiet place or you know writing or reading or walking or you know just something that'll you know keep your peace going um i definitely definitely can relate to that but <laughs> i'm just not getting to that space um in mind because i'm always you know, running around for any and everything, 
and everybody else. So uh, definitely got to learn how to take care of myself, do self-care things. So this is one reason why I, when I saw your page, I was like, yeah, I'm going to enjoy definitely talking to you because I need, you know, I would like to learn, you know, more about, you know, those different topics or whatnot. Um, also, I guess I was looking at, I was also looking at, you know, of course your website, um, and looking at the, uh, books that you wrote about for the children's book. Yeah, I have a, the children's book came out of a realization that I had an abandonment wound, which I didn't actually realize I did. Mm. Um, I actually was in a kind of toxic relationship. I didn't realize it was toxic at the time, Mm -hmm. but sometimes uh, people trigger you. So even though Mm. it's a toxic relationship, I'm actually kind of grateful for it Mm -hmm. because I learned a lot about myself and I learned first, I got to get out. And secondly, (laughs) secondly, I learned that I had some triggers that I didn't know I had. Mm -hmm. And um, so I woke up one morning and you know, I write poetry all the time. So it's not unusual for me to wake up and have a poem that just starts popping in my head. And I'm like, oh, let me right. write this down. But what was unusual about this is I had just kind of had a dream about my dad who has passed. Mm-hmm. And I also woke up and I was seeing images in my head, which has never happened with poetry. So I realized right. it wasn't a poem. Well, it was a poem, but it was a children's book. Mm. so it was kind of like a Dr. Seuss kind of thing because right. all these images so I was writing the poem and then I started sketching all the images and the, the book came out really beautiful now those are not my sketches I had to turn my sketches over to somebody else <laughs> to bring my dream to life uh, I actually right. used a woman on fiber um, because okay. I had some rough sketches of what I wanted things to look like and, right. and she she took that and she uh, she did an amazing job bringing that to life And so that's really, so the book um, was written for children, basically nine and up Mm -hmm. to tell them that they were born with value. And Mm -hmm. even if people around them, like their peers or even their parents are critical or don't really see their value, it doesn't mean that it's not there. Right. If something tragic happens to them, like if they get abused in some kind of way, put in the foster care system, it mm-hmm. means that they don't have value. Right. It means that, you know, because in my particular case, I was moved around a lot when I was a kid from relative to relative to relative. And it was kind of like that, that Will Smith scene. What mm-hmm. you know? yeah. Yes. <laughs> so I didn't actually realize, I, I kind of knew it in the back of my head that I had that thought, mm-hmm. but I never really had come to terms with it. Right. And so here I am, basically 51 years old, coming to terms with something that happened to me when I was, you know, right. Six, seven, mm-hmm. five, four, three, two, you know. Yeah. And and it was it was pretty wild, but it, it was a healing journey. So and, and that's another thing. I've done a lot of workshops with it and a lot of adults have bought it for themselves. Right. Because they're like, oh, I'm I, I don't it. buy this for my daughter <laughs> or my granddaughter or my, right. you know, my friend's kid, but I'll read the I'll read the book sometimes in the workshop and they say, no, I need to read this to myself Mm -hmm. because I I need I needed this message. Nobody ever said this to me. Right. That how valuable I was just because I was born, how valuable like I was born because the world needed a me. There's Mm -hmm. something about me that was missing in the world and I have a purpose in being here. Right. So so that's where the children's book came from. So it was it was very emotional to write and very healing to write. And I, I ha- I'm glad that I was able to do it because it has helped uh, some people. You right. Know. So how long did it usually, like I know when you're writing something, especially if when you're dealing with it, like how long did it take you to write it? Because I know it took you down a journey uh, in, in your mind to where it's like, okay, I got this. Well, the book, that book was the shortest book I've ever written because the poem was written in an hour. The illustration probably took another hour just for me to sketch him out. But the illustrator took about mm, five five to six weeks to illustrate it because she had several other jobs on her plate. Right. And um, 
you know, my editor looked it over and she gave me a couple of suggestions. And so it actually was done really quickly. Um, I think that I wrote it and had it out. It was definitely out by Christmas, but I think I started writing it um, maybe in late September or mm -hmm. early October. And we had it out like the week before Christmas last year. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. And it was, uh, it actually was number one in Kindle for children's books on social values mm -hmm. for Christmas season. So for like, you know, from like, I think we put it out like December 9th or something like that, mm -hmm. all the way through like the first week of January, it was number one. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. That says a lot because a lot of people, like you said, a lot of people don't realize um, or, or was never told um, those values about themselves. So that, um, and then it brings back the little kid and them like, okay, you know, you're able to overcome those things. Cause I know a lot of things like for me, uh, a lot of things that happened in my younger, you know, the younger years hindered a lot of things that was, you know, for my, you know, adulthood. Um, so to know that as, as a young girl, you know, I, um, I, you know, was valuable in a lot of areas. So I believe when I get the book, I'll get it for my daughter, my boys or whatever, but I'm going to read it. I know I'll probably read it more than them. Um, just as a reminder, you know, that how valuable you are and how you're needed. So I like books like that, um, like affirmation kind of thing. Yeah, it does actually have a whole page of affirmations in it. So when you read it to your child or mm -hmm. they read it to themselves, they'll actually be reading affirmations about themselves. Yeah, that's a good thing because a lot of kids these days, like this this generation, this next one right here, um, I believe they need it um, more than usual because there's a lot more going on now than it was, you know, when we were younger. Um so it'll be good. I'm I'm definitely going to support the book and the rest of this merch, honey, because I'm looking at this merch and I'm like, okay, I need this headband. I need this shirt. I need this everything. Um, but yeah, it sounds like definitely you've been super, super busy, super, super busy, um, you know, building uh, this. So I'm definitely grateful for that. So is there like... I guess any other advice, like, I guess for me, because I'm going to be selfish on this one, you know, because I just um, literally, I'm not going to say I just started, like, the podcast or whatnot, but, like, I would like for, um, I guess, I don't know how would I say it, how would I say it, like, how would you, I don't know how to put it, it was in my head earlier, but I can't think of it now, but, hmm. I guess, how did you gain, I guess my, my first question would be like, how did you get yourself to where you can make those connections? I know you say you, you walked through the door when the door was open, but as you continue to walk, like what did that journey look like? Well, I, I'm, I'm very intentional about when I leave the house, in a sense, mm -hmm. I, for my books, I went on getcovers.com and I got bookmarks made for my book. So if you see me, unless I'm going to the gym, if I have my purse, I have bookmarks and I have stickers with me. I have a sticker for my podcast. I have bookmarks for my book that have a mm -hmm. QR code on them. So okay. nine times out of 10, I'm going to be handing something to somebody that I run into that smiles at me or that I say hi to, mm -hmm. whether we're in the elevator, whether we're, you know, whether I'm checking out at the grocery store checking out at Burger King. I'm, right. I'm constantly handing stuff out to people. Um, so that's something that I, my mother was an entrepreneur and she was, I, it used to embarrass me as a kid because mm -hmm. I guarantee you she was networking 24 seven. Every time she left the house, she had her business card. She was talking, mm -hmm. to people, you know, so I used to hate it when I was a kid. I'd be like, <laughs> right. can we just go somewhere without you right. trying to tell somebody something? <laughs> right. So, um, but uh, but I picked that up from her when I became a, a entrepreneur because you just never know. Right there, um, I've gotten a lot of my podcast guests that way. Mm -hmm. I've gotten sales. I've literally gotten sales. You know, I was in Office Depot and when I was doing mm -hmm. poetry shows at the Improv, mm -hmm. I was standing in line behind me and I was like, "Hey, how you doing?" You know, um, 
um, and I just started doing small talk with him while we we're waiting in line. And and I said, you know, you got any plans this weekend because I'm performing? And he was like, no. And I was I sold him two tickets to the show right there in line, <laughs> you know. Um, so I have done that. Um, some people are not. I consider myself an introvert, but I almost mm-hmm. like, I, I feel like I have like an alter ego when I'm on stage. So I kind of tap into that. Right. So, and I've also done the same thing with books. I generally carry uh, at least one to two of each of my books in a little backpack in my car. So I've literally told people about my books or handed them a bookmark and they say, oh, I'd love to get this. Man, I wish you had one. Oh, I do. (laughs) Right. And and I've sold, you know, I sold a book, my last book, well, not the last book, last week, I sold a book at Firestone. I was getting my tires done. Oh, wow. And I handed this guy a bookmark and he asked me what was the first line of my memoir. Mm-hmm. And I said, uh, I belong to a category of women that men think doesn't exist, single mm-hmm. by choice and content. And he was like, that sounds interesting. I wish you had one. I said, sir, I do. He was like, how much is it? I was like $20. Right. And, and I sold him a book and I normally take pictures of people that buy my books. I was like, can I take a picture of you with the book? Oh, yeah. Right. So, so I would say that if you're really going to do this, this is just mm-hmm. my, my advice. Everybody's different. Mm-hmm. If you're really going to be a podcaster, if you're really going to be an author, you know, whatever it is, you've got to be constantly promoting because um, your audience is not inside your house. Right. They don't know you exist. I don't do any paid ads. I haven't done mm-hmm. it probably in two years. So all of my traffic is from the posts that I make and the things that I hand out. Okay. And so, you know, I may decide to do some marketing in the future, but right now I feel like I can, I can get enough organic traffic. Mm -hmm. So I would rather do it that way. So that that's Mm -hmm. my advice is that get you some, you know, get you some stickers, get you some flyers, get you something and be handing it out. Um, right. You know, get you. A, I, I use Linktree. I love Linktree. It's only nine dollars a month. I can mm-hmm. put my links on there, put the little QR code on there. And mm-hmm. when, when a person hits that link, they got all of my stuff. They have the events. They have the books. They have the podcast. You know, they have the merchandise. It's all right. in one spot. So okay. I, that's what I would say is. I may not be. um a guru on how to make money in, in, in mm-hmm. hand over fist, like some of these people with these 10 K right. and all that mm-hmm. stuff. I can tell you, mm-hmm. you gotta have a little bit of money coming in on a constant basis just by putting yourself out there. Right. You know? Right. And I feel like that, that will be honestly, that will be better only because like, if you want something and you want it, like, if it's yours, you know what I'm saying? Like, if it's your baby, you're going to take care of it. You're going to do everything you need to do to take care of it. And if you're going to advertise it, you know, do it. Um, you you got to put in the work for it. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Um, in order to get what you really want, you got to put some work into it. Like, time and, like you said, advertising and a more authentic way on your, you know, to, so people can see your face, not nobody else's face, I guess is um where I'm going. I don't know if that made sense, but um I think it made sense in my head. Um but yeah I definitely I'll definitely uh take that advice that's for sure. Um so like do you have anything coming up like really soon as far as like performances and stuff like that that we should you know I do a performance the first Friday of each month at the Shrine of the Black Madonna. So we just had the one for September on this past Friday. So uh, the first Friday coming up of October will be at the Shrine from 7.30 to 10. Um, I also do write space events. uh, So I do writing workshops, but I don't have the next one. uh, I don't have the date for the next one yet. So, but if Mm -hmm. people follow me, they'll see when that's posted. So if they're in the Houston area, they can, you know, come out because I normally do them in person. I'm not doing them online yet. Right. Um, and of course, I do have four books on Amazon. I have my poetry prose memoir, which is my personal healing journey. I have a guided mm. journal. I have a planner and I have the children's book. And um, I have other merchandise because I have a whole different website with like T-shirts. and. Yes, I was looking at that. 
Yeah, I was definitely looking at the merch. I was looking at the the headbands and the shirts and everything that you had on there. Um, definitely, you yeah, you definitely been doing it. Uh, what's the name of the um the actual journal? Was it the um the journal the planner? Um, the journal and the planner. So the journal is called Zenergize Your Life. So it actually pairs with the podcast Zenergy. And mm. it's only 29 pages. So it's not, you know, some guided journals are 365. But to me, it right. was way too much. Mm. And I didn't like that it was repetitive. So it has a lot of different types of journal prompts. It has gratitude prompts. It has visualization, goal setting prompts, reflection prompts. It has prompts where you set affirmations for yourself. Mm -hmm. so there's a lot of different types of prompts, but it also pairs with the podcast. So you can actually listen to the podcast, mm -hmm. go to the guided journal and actually journal about what we talked about on the podcast and set your okay. own goals. And it also have, has places where you can put like role models in this area, books you want to read, um, mm -hmm. things that you might want to watch where this person is really pushing, you know, that topic forward. Um, mm -hmm. it also has places to put, like I said, goals or vision boards in there. So it's a lot of oh, cool. activities. So it's a very different type of guided journal than write three things you're grateful about today. Right. You know, which those are good, but they're limited to me. They're limited. Right. right. So that's, that's the guided journal. Okay. Okay. And you, and we can, um, is this the correct website, the last and Lyricsandlyrics.com is um, where I have a lot of my merch. I also have a link tree. So mm -hmm. if you, um, you know, my name is Zenashe, Z-E-N-A-S-E. If you type that into Google, you can go straight to Amazon and buy the books on Amazon. Okay. If you have a Kindle, all my books are free on Kindle Unlimited. Okay. And if you click on Zenashe on Google and you go to my social media, in most of my social media bios, I have the link tree link there. And if okay. you click on that, um, you can see the podcast, you know, um, links. Or you can, the podcast is called Zenergy. So okay. people could listen to the podcast for free, of course. So, you know, so. Okay. So how often do you like post your um uh, the podcast I was posting weekly for a while and then it just got to be too much because I was doing events mm -hmm. and I was writing you know and I, so I, I've been dropping about monthly but I have um, about 119 episodes out okay and the majority of them are either self-care self-development self-empowerment but I do have two of the live shows that I did uh, with poetry comedy and music on the podcast and I have 11 audio chapters from my memoir where people can actually listen to the first 11 chapters of the memoir. Okay. And I have two clips from author events that I did because I also put on author events a couple of times a year where authors come out and we do Q and A's and book signings, you know, and, and get to interact with the audiences. So I have a, a couple of authors on there as well, as well as myself doing Q and A's. Okay, that sounds like fun. I'm gonna have to make my way to Houston, huh? Definitely, definitely my um Houston. Um, I was like, I think I think one book I might have missed. It says uh, plenty of guppies and others. Like, what 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 do you got about? So, plenty of guppies and other dating misadventures is my personal m memoir. It's my personal healing okay. journey. So it begins the day that I got divorced in June of 2014. Mm -hmm. And from 2014 till when I released the book in 2021, I actually went on 147 dates. And wow. Yeah. Okay. Since I'm a journaler, I was journaling these. Days. Right. And, uh, but I learned a lot about myself and I learned mm -hmm. a lot about relationships and men. So I gave 101 of these people, these guys, a nickname. And then I tell you the story of the date, but I also tell you what I learned from interacting with all these different people. And it's not just a book about dating because during that same seven year period, I went natural. Mm -hmm. So I cut all my relaxed hair off and went natural. I mm -hmm. had a spiritual journey. I became um, a podcaster. I became a spoken word artist. I became a grandmother. I lost several people in my life because, you know, we all went through quarantine and most of right. us probably lost somebody, but 
I lost yeah. some key people in my life. So you see me go through all these ups and downs and you see me, you know, learn from them, bounce back. And so it's my personal healing journey. Um, you see me take risks. You see me, you know, believe in myself. You see me stumble and fall, you know, you see all those things. So regardless of whether you're male, female, or, or, you know, you don't even consider yourself a certain gender, regardless mm -hmm. of your age, if you're an adult, there's something in that book that you can relate to because we all go on a journey in life. Right. And right. so a lot of people have picked it up because they were going through grief. Some people have picked it up because they were starting their business. Some people have picked it up because they just got divorced, you know? Um, so it's, it's a lot of, it's a lot of stuff in there for a lot of different people. Okay. Yeah, definitely. I, yeah, I will be, I will be going on Amazon and working on getting that book. Uh, Cause I know, um, I believe, I don't know, like I said, uh, writing a book and giving it to other people. Cause I feel like our journey that we go through in our lives from youth to now and so on and so on forever till, you know, we get called home um, is meant for someone else. Um, it's not just made for us because again, somebody next door might be going through the same thing that you're going through or went through and, you know, they need, you know, guidance and help and advice on how to make it through just like you did or like we did um, uh, through life's journey. So I'm definitely going to be advertising the book um, and also uh, the podcast as well. Um so that other people could know that, you know, they're not alone in their journeys as well. Well, thank you for that. I appreciate that. Uh, you're definitely welcome. Is there like any other, um, you know, I, I guess we, I think we hit and missed it most of the time. So how can people find you again? One more time. Um, my name is Zenashe, Z-E-N-A-S-E. -E. So I am on Instagram at Zenashe Poetry. Um, my podcast is Zenergy, Z-E-N-N-U-R-G-Y. So you can find Zenergy on all streaming platforms. You can also find Zenergy on TikTok, on um, IG, um, and they can find me on Facebook. I also have a page, Zenashe. I try to post a lot of stuff on there, you know, just like things that I find interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and basically, like I said, if they, if they Google me, they should be able to find my Amazon page. They should be able to find my, my uh, social media with the link tree there. And okay. like I said, if they Google the podcast energy, they should be able to find it's on like 25 different streaming platforms. So, you know, you can listen to it for free on Spotify, Pandora, iHeartRadio, you know, pretty much everywhere. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher. Okay. okay. Yeah. I think that's uh, once you, I think once you get connected to one, I think they're like, they branch off to a lot, a lot, um, a lot other, especially like Spotify. Um, they connect everywhere. But I truly um, enjoyed the conversation and I hope again that this won't be the last time that we um, able to chat. Um, we'll be able to break it down a little bit more next time. Um, well, thank you yeah. for having me. I appreciate you letting me come on your podcast. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, again, I will be, you know, I'll let you know um, uh, the next, I guess the next steps, everything uh, afterwards. Um, and also, again, I said, hopefully this won't be the last time, rather on or off podcast, that we're able to chat. Yes. Yes. All right. Well, I hope you have a great evening and enjoy the holidays and be safe. You too. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for listening to Let's Be Real 100% where we're 100% real about life. We hope that you enjoyed the topic today and we hope that you trust God more and more each day and we hope to see you next week.